Okay, let's take R2 bromobutane, drawn the way I usually draw it, with my 3D rendering with the bromine coming out at you and the H going back. And let's prove that it's R1 to 2 to 3, and it's the H is going back, so this is R2 bromobutane. And so we're going to make a Fisher projection out of this. Now, when I look at this, the easiest way to do this would be to take my eyeball, there's my eyeball, and look right there at this carbon. And then we're going to squish it and make them all 90 degrees. So a Fisher projection always has a cross on every chiral carbon. So it looks like this. So the bromine, when I'm standing right here looking at it, the bromine will be on my right hand side. The hydrogen will be on my left hand side. This ethyl group will be at my head and the methyl group will be at my feet. Now remember what this means is the bromine is coming out at you and the hydrogen is coming out at you and the ethyl group is going back and the methyl group is going back. But we don't draw it like this, we draw it flat. Now let's check whether it's R or S. One to two to three. So when we look at this, it is going in a counterclockwise motion, one to two to three. So it's S, but remember the H is coming out at you. So this would be the opposite of what you see. And a lot of times with Fisher projections, you have H's on the horizontal, which means coming out, so it's the opposite of what you see. So this is indeed an R. So it's pretty easy to see the enantiomer. If I do the other Fisher projection, I'll have Here's my mirror right down the middle. Here's my ethyl group, CH2, CH3 at the top, CH3 here. And just flip the chiral carbon so the bromine will be on the left and the hydrogen will be on the right. And this will be our S configuration. So these two would be enantiomers. And the beauty of Fisher projections is that you can see enantiomers fairly easily. So I'm going to just draw any, see if I can make it random, draw a Fisher projection. So I'll put an H here and a BR here and an ethyl group CH2, CH3 here and a CH3. And remember with only one chiral carbon, the, it is either the enantiomer or identical. So we're going to see which one this is. Does it match? This one, let's call this one or two or R or S. So this compound right here, one to two to three, the H is going back. So it's the same as what we see. We see R. So this compound is the same as the first one that we drew. Well, now let's look at two chiral carbons. So I'm going to take this compound right here. Let's name it. I'll have a bromine coming out and a OH coming out. This, of course, will be named numbering it this way because oxygen takes precedence. So this would be 3 bromo 2 butanol. And if we do R's and S's, 1 to 2 to 3. So the bromine is going to be an R. And then 1 to 2, all these 2's, I should have put it in different colors, 3. And the oxygen, the alcohol, will be R. So this would be 2R, 3R, dash, 3-bromobutanol. So I'm going to put this into a Fisher projection. I will do 180 degree rotation around this bond. And what I'm doing here is getting it so the tops are coming out at me. So the left hand side, the one with the bromine, stays the same. I'm going to draw in the H's and th this won't have all those numbers so it'll be easy to see. So when you do the 180 degree rotation, the OH is coming out 
in this picture, but it'll be going back in the other. So there's OH going back and the H is coming out. So now to make this into a Fisher projection, pretend you're flying above the molecule. So here am I flying above the molecule and I see the bromine on my left hand side on uh, this carbon number three and the H on my left hand side on carbon number two. So I'll set up my Fisher projection and remember, every chiral carbon gets a cross. And I'll put CH3 at the top and a CH3 at the bottom. And then the bromine was on my left and the H was on my left on the carbon number two. And then this is an H and this is an OH. So let's double check that we have the same configuration. This is carbon one, this is bromine is one, the bottom is number two, methyl is number three, we see S, but the H is coming out, so it's the opposite of what we see, so this is yes, indeed R. Let's do the one with the alcohol, one to two, to three. Again, we see S. It's the opposite of what we see because the H is coming out. So this is R. So again, the nice thing about Fisher projections is it's fairly easy. Oh, I didn't mean to put that in red. Just a second. So let's make it black. There we go. We're going to set up the enantiomer. So every, every cross is a chiral carbon and CH3 on the top. You usually have the carbon chain up and down and then just flip both of them. And if you can see when we do this, it's really easy to see the mirror going down the middle. There's the mirror and these two are enantiomers. And because we've already done these as reference, it's easy to remember that when you flip these two, this will go from S, R to S and this will go from R to S. And then if we're going to do the other stereoisomers with four, with two chiral carbons, we're going to have four stereoisomers. I'm going to set up both my Fisher projections. Sorry, this is a little crowded here. There, I moved it up a little bit. So let's put a CH3 here and a CH3 now. To make the diastereomer of our 2R3R, I'm going to move just one of the chiral carbons, just flip one of them. So I'll keep the top the same, so that will be the R configuration, and then put the OH over here and the H over here. And then to do its enantiomer, I will, and here again is our mirror image, put an H and a BR and an H and an OH and a CH3. So then this first or second or third, whatever chiral carbon, this will be R and this will be S and this will be S and this will be R. So these two are sets of enantiomers. So both of these are sets of enantiomers and the relationship between the top and the bottoms are diastereomers. So when you have two chiral carbons, you can have enantiomers or diastereomers. If you have only one chiral carbon, you can't have diastereomers.